Chapter 2, Engineer Turrenter, PvP and PvE. Welcome back, peeps, to Chapter 2 of the Melrose Adventures. That's right, welcome back. In this chapter, I'll be discussing what is known as the Turrenter Engineer, which is one of my favorite builds on the Engineer. That's right, it is one of my favorites due for the fact is that this bad boy has turrets. And what I mean by turrets, this, this build relies on turrets. It's pretty much all additional DPS as well as the, some random heals. And if you go for the experimental turrets in the full track line as alchemy in tier 3, you'll be able to get random boons. Uh, not by not by saying random, but every in intervals of 10 seconds get a boon applied by the experimental, experimental turrets. And I will show you right now. Alright, for this build in general, you can use it for open world bosses, PvE, solo PvE. Uh, PvP, I'm... It, it's it's okay uh, not that great but if you do it correctly it is phenomenal and people will hate you and say you have no skill well guess what you have no skill and for world vs world it's not that great it really is not because you're going to have to continuously pick it up if you're doing zergs even if you're roaming by yourself then they may save you uh, it could be great for 1v1 but otherwise if you have going against three other people they'll just target your turrets first and then come after you second so it it's it it's that one's kind of debatable right now at least in my circumstance in my point of view um, for this build in general you want to go full berserker as well as breaker secrets you can also go with assassins to get the night extra precision if you want uh, but weapons you can go rifle pistol pistol or pistol and shield uh, it's very up to you of your playstyle. Uh, I would suggest if just for beginning, you could go with pistol and shield. Uh, due for the fact is is that pistol and shield is really nice, uh, especially with the skill number th one and skill number three on your pistol, uh, because pistol number three skill is going to do nice static shot as well as do some of the additional number of bounces of damage, doing blindness as well as confusion, which is some nice condition damage. Uh, for fragmentation shot, it's going to be a number of five targets, so in that area where you hit them, hit your target, and there's a more cluster of enemies around that target, uh, they're also going to be affected by bleeding, nice little damage, there's also a nice combo uh, finisher for phys physical projectiles by 20% chance, which ain't that bad, give it a, give it a little, um, just for beginning, if you really want to go for it, you can also go for, eh, oh crap, I can't clip it, but, Anyway, you can also go for Predator, uh, not Predator, but Rifle, sorry, I yes, I have a Predator. Uh, you can go for that, it's also great for PvP as well as PvE, same thing with uh, Pistol and Shield. Uh, I'm going to get into the PvP setup uh, shortly after I show you guys the PvE type content style and the choices you can go for your turrets. Now, with the turrets being mentioned and how people don't like them as much as because they're the cooldown takes forever on most powerful ones which i can understand why they made it that way on the recharge but at the same time to me turrets are our pets they, i don't care what anyone says for engineer these guys are our pets and they are extremely awesome now for the first tier in tier one of an explosive you're going to go accelerated pack turrets which is going to give yourself a nice 1322 tops if you unless you go with master two tier two for damage increased by explosive but otherwise uh this is gonna be great especially if they go down uh since turrets are pretty squishy uh it's gonna actually do one nice knockback as well as some nice damage to the enemy or even the other player if you're doing this in pvp <coughs> now with that also being said it also does some great damage so now for inventions, you're gonna go to full six. You're gonna pick up uh, tier one metal plating, do a nice uh, damage reduction to your turrets by 33%. Uh, tier two, you're gonna go with auto installation, nice 5% intervals of three seconds for self-repairing. Tier three, this is optional. You can go with the damage increase by 15% as well as a range increase by 50%, or you can go with fortified turrets. Now, if you're going to go at Fortify Turrets, just remember to use the weakest uh, reduction uh, recharge, that which would be in order, Healing Turret, Rifle Turret, Flame Turret, and then Net Turret. Uh, what I mean by the weakest ones is that they're the, the lowest recharge possible. Uh, they are far, really somewhat weak. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, pretty much your best ones are your Rocket Turret and your Thumper Turret are probably one of the best, but I'll get into that in a minute. 
uh, for tier one in alchemy, you're going to go in uh, acidic coating, which is being really nice, trigger a 50% chance uh, to inflict bl blindness on your next outgoing attack. Uh, meaning whenever someone hits you with a melee, they'll have a 50% chance to get inflicted by blindness, which means we'll save you, means you'll get less damage and whatnot, and they'll miss. For tier 2 in alchemy, you're also going to get projection injection just to get that extra 33% reduction in damage for 4 seconds for protection. Uh, you can get this every 5 seconds, which the protection is going to pretty much whenever you're disabled, stun, daze, knockdown, knockback, launch, float, sink, or fear you're going to be able to get that application, and it will also migrate some of the damage given. And Expel Returns, place but not last, uh, Returns will apply boons to allies around that team, also including yourself, and it rolls at 10 seconds. Now, you can increase the duration of this if you go for boon duration, since you already have boon, dur boon duration in Alchemy. If you go with your ruins, you can be able to do that as well. Uh, with Deterrence being applying boons, Flame Turrets going to give you one st uh, three stacks of might for 13 seconds. Healing turret is going to give you four seconds of vigor. Next turn is going to give you 13 seconds of swiftness. Rifle, fury, six and a half seconds. Rocket turret is going to give you retaliation for four seconds. And bumper turret is also going to give you four seconds of protection. And this is little intervals of 10 seconds, but you got to make sure you're around a 600 yard radius and you'll be able to get this. Now, there's other ways to do this. Uh, you don't have to go with experimental turrets and PvE content and PvE, I mean PvP, sorry. Uh, this is very, very the fundamental build for it, the core build. And it could also be used in PvE as well. I found it very useful, especially going against, you know, long bosses and you just want to, you know, offer something to the table if you're tired of going with regular grenades or something that you're just getting bored of and whatever, by whatever means that may be. Um, you can go for the full trait line in uh, firearms and retake out acidic coating as well as the experimental turrets as well as projection ejection and you can go for like complete rifle to increase your damage proportion. Uh, you can also go for pistols, uh, pretty much anything that's going to give you a nice uh, standard increase in your vision precision line and what I mean by that is for instance, let's I'll show you right now, that would be a big, great way to do it. Uh, you can go for hair trigger for your pistols as well as your rifles to reduce nice re reduce recharge. You can also go precise sights to just 50% chance to inflict a vulnerability. Uh, rifle balance to increase your range of your rifle and your pistol skills. You can also go with uh, induced precision as well as uh, sitting duck. Now sitting duck would be great with the combination with net turret uh, as well as rifle number two and pistol number five. Uh, that's going to apply a nice cripple vulnerability, so that means you can get more conditions on it and whatnot. Uh, for also, you can go rifle mod, uh, or you can also go with coated bullets, or you can also go with a combination of the other ones previously full. Now, for the last tier, you can actually go with modified ammunition, which is pretty much really nice. It gives you a nice 2% increase in damage uh, per condition applied on your uh, enemy. Now, you can also go with bunker down. Uh, it's it's okay, but this kind of build a since you don't have it, uh, just make sure you have rifle barrels in, so you get a nice uh, range increase. And whenever an enemy walks over one of your landmines, they're going to get a nice damage uh, for 429. But the dura duration is really nice for every two seconds, so you'll be able to put the maximum of five max. So it'll pretty much keep overriding itself, uh, depending on how many times you crit. Um, <coughs> Now, with that being said, this is also pretty, pretty nice uh, if you do this in PvP. This can also be a nice way to change up your playstyle a bit and whatnot. Alright, I will be back shortly. I'm going to show you guys the PvP style aspect of this build. Alright, I'll see you guys soon. Welcome back, peeps. Alright, I'm going to show you guys the PvP portion of the turn turn. Alright, for the build, you're probably going to keep the same way as before, as I originally mentioned, for your trait system. Uh, two, six inventions, and six in alchemy. I'm going to go over what traits you can pick up real quickly. Uh, tier one, you're going to go explosives, accelerated pack turrets. Tier one, inventions, reduced, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, metal plating. Tier two, inventions, auto installation. And tier three, no, inventions, rifle turret barrels. In tier one of alchemy, acidic coating. In tier two, protection ejection in alchemy. As finally, experimental turrets in alchemy. Tier three, 
that is being the build, yeah. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna show you exactly. Oh, let me. Okay, first off, they say go with rifle. Rifle's great. The only problem I find with rifle is that one, the knockback ain't that great. The knockback's gonna knock you back. So if you're trying to capture a point and whatnot, it is gonna either unless you have stability. I find it useless. The only the great thing is there's the long shot, or meaning when you have to jump to the target enemy. I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. Now, you have your jump shot. Uh, it's great, don't get me wrong. It's nice, it's a nice vulnerability. Number five target, it's not great. But your overcharge shot is going to be pretty tricky. This is all like close range. Uh, the reason like you can use it, depending on the situation and whatnot, I actually found that using pistol and shield actually is slightly more effective. It's I, I I seen it in action. I even played it in action. I got some great comments for this. Uh, due for it, it makes you more bunkier. Uh, just because rifle, don't get me wrong, is great. It is great for this kind of setup, especially in a PvP type style. I mean, even in PvP. But I, with my type of test style, when I go with this, I find it very, 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 very top higher than with rifle. Is due for the fact is that with pistol you're going to get a nice more conditions as well as the shield uh, abilities now the abilities from the shield are very situational so just remember you do have a block so that means you're going to get no incoming uh, conditions no damage you're just going to block but it's only for one and a half seconds which can make you survive and be the turn of the fight now also with that if you throw your charge shield out you'll be able to daze your target for one second it's range is short so it's not that bad but it's also number five targets now with magnetic shield this is great for projectiles this is for great any kind of class you're else you're going against that does projectiles it will reflect it for three seconds but then on top of it if you release it you'll be able to push them black now that's on top of that but it's also a blast finisher so with this build you're gonna get a lot of blast finishers but on top of it you can if you're like really down there and you have all your turrets all set up and whatnot, and the last one you can't, comes back up is your healing turret. Bam, you overcharge it, you charge it again, and detonate it, and then you detonate all your turrets, and then at the same time have the regenerating mist build up. You can do rumble, and then immediately after that, do a nice magnetic shield blast, and just do an accession and all that in a row. You'll be getting yourself a nice chunk of healing. I mean, health ready came back to you like it was like a gift. And I found it very, very nice. Now, with the skills, sorry, I always keep going to the wrong menu. Uh, with the skills and whatnot, I'm going to get into the point of what kind of turns you can use in certain situations based on what kind of enemies you're doing. Uh, I actually change it up a lot, especially if I'm on, on ranked in PvP. Is like I don't want people getting used to the same type of turret over and over. So I keep swapping, keep swapping it and rechanging it out continuously. They say just go with... Rifle turret, rocket turret, and as well as thumper turret, and sometimes flame turret. Now, I'm going to get into that. They never say uh, net turret is because the rate of fire is like around 10 seconds, and it's not that great, but if you do it correctly, you can actually kill someone very effectively, especially with the stun and the overcharge of that turret. Now, with your sigils, you primarily want to go with sigil of ice as well as sigil of pure, pure purity. Um, the reason why I went with Purity and as well as Sigil of Ice is that they're both on chance I'd hit. There's no critical with it. This is not a critical type build. Not whatsoever. This is not like PvE at all. Like, not at all. This is all about survivability, trying to keep that point maintained, and let the rest of your teammates either, you know, go for point A to point C to point B and vice versa. Or if you manage, you want to pick up your turns and go to another location, you can. But just remember, this is not a... This is... This is a stationary type style build. This ain't a lot of low cooldown, so you're gonna have to rely on your tool belt skills if you get in those situations where it's like, oh crap, I'm gonna die. You have the, those situations where it can become more effective for yourself. Now with the sigil ice, I found it very nice is because it's going to slow down your enemy, first off. Secondly, their skills are gonna slow down as well. So if they're trying to pop out save ability, you'll be able to push them back with your overcharge shot or even with uh, thumper turret. And with and also 
going to that type of style, it also can save you if you're trying to res somebody or it comes off and it works perfectly well for you. It's, it's only a 30% 30, 30 chance, but it will help you out in the long run. If you don't have it, that's okay, but it will increase your more your survivability chance a lot higher than not having it. Uh, same thing with Sigil of Pur Purity. Um, with your ruins, though, uh, you it's mandatory if you can go with ruins uh, Mel Melorandu. Um, you can swap that out, but since this is type of style bunker, you really want to go with it. You can, though, go with. Uh, I'm trying to remember. You can also go with Dolak. Uh, regenerate health every second, and it's also vitality and toughness, so you still retain the toughness, but you lose out on those incoming uh, condition durations as well as incoming stun duration. But at the same time, you'll be able to regenerate health and still have a little bit more higher vitality than what you have now. But I found that Ruin of Melandu Mel was actually really great. It works out like charm as it says. It does a nice incoming duration condition as well as stuns, especially with necromancers and their conditions. And it meant to still be in type style conditions. Uh, I found it very effective, especially all the mainstream people who keep using the same build for their classes. This will actually be quite effective. I always try to mention, and always try to do is change up your playstyle because some person might remember you from doing something and you annihilate them so many times and they remember exactly how you do it. You change it up a lot, people won't get used to it. Especially those weird villains you make and they just don't understand. This can be one of those the styles that you can change up. Now, with that being said with your amulets you can go with soldier amulet or you can also go with uh sorry i'm like kind of going with bitches here uh sentinel amulet now i actually sometimes actually change up my amulets as well uh i actually sometimes go with cleric's amulet uh due to the fact is that my heals will be a lot more quietly more effective and if with combination with another ruin with heals uh it'll be great for my teammates as well as if they're trying to help me take down a person or a couple who are other bunkers um and they find it very quietly effective and it works sometimes it works not all the time so it's just like one of those like ooh, it worked one time but the rest of the thousand times he it, it didn't work whatsoever it was horrible but it's a little nice change of play style um i wouldn't say going with nagi is just for the fact is that you do not need precision for this build uh the vitality yes but you really don't need it uh, clerics would be another great option, but technically Sentinels is probably the top tier for this. Uh, due to the fact is is that it's vitality, has toughness, and it has power. You definitely want to have power with your type style. I actually found it vi quite probably not probably, but mostly I found it quietly effective uh, with my pistols. Uh, due for the fact is that even though my pistols are conditions, and yes, you probably get a lot more. It'd probably be a lot easier if you went with condition type style, but not all your abilities here are all conditions. So, with that being said, um, Static Shock, Poison Dart Volley, and Fragmentation Shot. Now, with Poison Dart Volley, it's quite situational, especially. I usually like to pop that off first, is because it's number five, and I want the person to get off all their abilities. You can go with uh, Static Shot, but if they're Guardian and they have Aegis on, then you just pretty much wasted it. So that's why I use number two first, or you can also use number one and then get them when their Aegis is off, then apply the condition uh, for poison, as well as then do Static Shot and then repeat with and repeat with Fragmentation Shot, and let the rest of your turrets do the work for you. Now, with the turrets with utility, uh, Pretty much, you, you can go with uh, Rifle, Rocket Turret, as well as Thumper Turret. Now, when I use Thumper Turret, I always place it in dead center of where your PvP, PvP sorry, Capture Point is. And then right after, uh, apply either your Rifle Turret or even your Rocket Turret into that type of area. And make sure you have it spread out nicely. Uh, you can put your Rocket Turret behind your Thumper Turret. Uh, you don't have to, but you can. Uh, you can also put it aside, and just remember, setting this up is pretty much the key. You want to set it up perfectly, so then all your boons come to you in the 600 yard radius of your little point. Now, you can swap out Thumper Turret, though, or even Rifle Turret. You really want to keep Rocket as close, because it hits a lot, it's hard-hitting hard, hard hitting damage, as well as it has a nice knockback, and with that nice knockback, that means it'll stop the enemy in their tracks, and, it's just the, and they also can home on to the target. Now, 
with that being said, I usually also go with Flame Turret just for the sake is because Flame Turret has a nice overcharge and you're like in one of those oh crap moments where your enemy starts running towards you and whatnot and you're low on health and you just killed one guy, all you have to do is pop down Flame Turret, overcharge it, detonate it and you'll have a nice uh, stealth for a couple seconds that means you can retreat, pop down your healing turret, get right back up there and whatnot and go and just move over to another fight or just keep your rocket turret there stationary and just to keep the enemy busy while that's happening now that's pretty much the portion just make sure you have supply crate it's great it's gonna offer some great great DPS uh, when it comes to enemies uh, the fact is you're gonna get another flame turret so that means you're gonna get some nice stacks of might as well as another healing turret so you're gonna have clips and clips over clips of vigor so that means you're going to get a lot more endurance regeneration, means you're also going to get a lot more dodges. And that's what you need with this build, is you need to dodge a lot, unfortunately. But you, that's why you also have shields, so, you know, stun, stun, stun. Now, net turret, you can, it, it's very situational, yeah, since it does have a speed buff and whatnot. Uh, as I said, it's very situational if you want to stop any, any enemies from coming towards your point uh, through any kind of ramp or, you know, on top of something. They'll stop them right in their tracks just for the time being. Uh, the only problem with net turret is that it has such a long fire rate, and it's only 10 seconds. While well, the other ones have four, it has two. You know, even like flame turret is even better than net turret just for the sake is that it's a rate of fire three seconds, but it does the number of five targets, which is phenomenal. And at the same time, it applies a condition, but you can also overcharge it and use your pistol shots to inflict blindness so that means it's going to give you more survivability and if they're in it they're going to continuously get blind um, so and then remember you can also detonate it and get more stealth and if you really need more stealth uh, from overcharge just overcharge the rest of the rest of your turns and move on forward and you should be fine now you can use rifle don't get me wrong or you can use pistol and pistol pistol and pistol will be a little bit more quite trickier but at the same time you can maneuver a lot more conditions onto your enemy and that's pretty much essential. You just want to survive and try to just get, keep doing it. Uh, with your abilities, though, uh, I just want to quietly mention this real quick. You can take off uh, accelerated pack turrets, and you can swap it off if you're going rifle or pistol, for that mention. Uh, you can go for hair trigger to just get the re uh, reduction, or you can also go with uh, precise sights to get that vulnerability going on, or get your rifle barrels. Now, I actually go for... <clears throat> Sorry, uh, hair trigger just to get my pistol skills off more, meaning I get more poison dart volleys. That means poison, 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 as well as uh, stack shot, as well as fragmentation shot. But fragmentation shot has its original cooldown. It doesn't get affected by the redu reduction, but it's only two and three that will. And I find it quite effective because I get an extra blindness, as well as some poison, as well as some confusion. And with that being said, guys, this is the turnature for PvP. All right, I'll see you guys soon, and I'll show you guys some, uh, hopefully, some quite nice videos of how these will work in PVE as well as a PvP type environment. All right, peeps, I'll see you guys soon. Stay awesome. Okay, peeps, welcome back. I'm going to show you, showing you guys the PvP turtle points. Seize there in action uh, on rank PvP. I uh, would not suggest using this in rank PvP unless you're very, very custom to the build. Has appeared. Um, fortunately. Since we're in the beginning, I'm not really going to place any turrets until later on in the taken match. Bear. So, and I see like there's a couple going around here. Ooh, yay, look at that. I got, I got the reward. You've seized wolf. And what we're going to do... Ah, oh, this is perfect here. So we're just going to help this guy out here. Give me a madame. Let her try to keep capping up there. Ah, oh, good. There you go. See? It's quite effective with the pistol shot. Uh, it's a nice stacking. Continuous. Continuous. Ah, oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, look at that. So, 
so yeah. Come on, come on. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Nice. There you go. The enemy has Raven. By the burning. Show. Good show. Alright, we're gonna pick up the uh, ultimate recession here. You've taken an orb. Yeah, alright, we got a grenade right here. Wolves yeah, cool. fall into the enemy. I think I just walk past that a little bit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's how you do it. Very good. Very good. Nice. Very nice. Just gonna walk it out right now. Ah, oh, nice. Get another capture point. Yes. Come on. Come on. Almost there. Awesome. Alright, we're gonna capture this point here. Even though we're losing quite hefty, uh, we have a nice team going on over there at Blue. Orb has appeared. At Bear and at Wolf. We are capturing right now. Got a nice capture there. I believe middle is either going to red or blue, and it looks like a mid. Yep, we're going red. Nice. So that's that's really great going on right there. You've taken an orb. Nice. You've taken Raven. Okay, let's keep this guy going. Save him. Ah, dang it. Really? Ah, cussy Koopa. Hey, you are pretty squishy though with this kind of build. You really are. Uh, as you can see, he's doing that switcheroo, which I think should not be allowed because no other class can really do that. But, well, oh, silly thieves. They always try to do that crap. Teleport, tell it right back, back. And that's how they get, like, their... It's like elixir S technically with that. Yeah, it's quite effective too. It really is. Very quietly effective. I think it's crap, but eh, yeah, what the hell do I know? <laughs> is yours. I really don't know that much. But since they are going down, I'm gonna be able to capture this right here. Hopefully. And get away with this. You've Instead, taken I'm gonna orb. actually go right. And the unfortunate part is you're very, very slow. You gotta rely on your dodges, so. Really, dude? See, that's what happens. They just immediately stealth out, which is crap. Yep. <sighs> little bugger got away. Oh, and look at you. And you're just a little clever little bastard. Aren't you? Aren't you? I think not, good sir. Good think not. But it is quite effective, but it's not great. As you can see, a nice little demonstration by me. Melissa, doing orb running. You it ain't that one. great. It really isn't. It is horrible. They've taken bear. It's really horrible at running. But I'm still going to keep grabbing all these orbs here. Really? You're going to do this?
you. Have a nice day. <laughs> ah, look, we got another dude here. Eh, they're gonna get him. Good show, mate. Good show. Alright, just gotta pop this. There we go. Very nice, very nice indeed. And well, he's down. <laughs> ah, nice. Do 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 do. Incredible! Incredible! Nice. I'm just gonna win this. Just gotta win it. The orb has appeared. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? As I, as I said, it, this is actually really, really nice, especially if you're trying to get away from these guys. This will definitely help you out uh, with the overcharge from uh, Flame Turret, as well as the blindness that it offers with the uh, static shot with it together. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can go with Thumper Turret, don't get me wrong. Thumper Turret will be really grateful uh, just to knock people at, back, especially with these, uh, since their accessibility to stave ability is proprietly quite low. Um, as you see, I'm not using rifle. I, I find it useless in this kind of circumstance. So. Alright, peace. I will see you guys victorious. in the next chapter. Stay awesome. Look at the victory! Ha 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 ha.